morning, everybody. So today I'm going to talk about beginning with DNA painter chromosome mapping. What I hope to do is to go through and tell you a little bit about the history of DNA painter, review a bit about chromosomes so you can see where you get the data from that you'd want to be using in your chromosome mapping. Set up a profile at DNA Painter from registering for an account, and then show how you paint matches from each of the different sites, MyHeritage, 23andMe, Family Tree DNA, and GEDmatch. So DNA Painter was created in 2017 by Johnny Pearl, who was looking for a better way to visualize the data. So if you get a set of data, this is partial list of the DNA that my second cousin and I share. And this is a list from GEDmatch. And here's this lovely list of all these numbers. And I'm not a great one for using lists. I start looking at the top of the list and I work down a little bit. And before I get too far, my eyes are glazed over and what does it all mean? So what Johnny did was to take this data and show it in a different form by copying it and putting it out in an image like so. Now he uses the start and the end from each of those segments that had in that long table of numbers, but now I've got an image where I can then compare other matches with this and see if they're in the same location as one my cousin has. And then I can go back to that testing company and see if the person actually matches my cousin or not. So I find this very useful and a lot user friendlier than the um, list of uh, numbers. So on the DNA Painter website, there are a number of additional tools that I'm just going to mention briefly. The first is the Shared Center Morgan Project. And that actually has two parts. What you do is you would enter the number of centimorgans you share with the match up at the top of the screen in the box here. I put in 200, so we have something to look at. Many of you have, might have used this tool to figure out any of your matches already. And there are two parts on the tool. The table here is based on the probabilities from the ancestry white pages that Leia Locking put together in this table. They're computer synthesized uh, probabilities. This part of the table is the crowdsource data that Blaine Bettinger collected. And any of us can contribute to that data. There's a, a link at the top of the page for the Shared Center Morgan project that tells you where to send the results. But what you would have is a known cousin you know, and how much DNA you share and what site the test was on. And then it gets incorporated into this table when he updates the table. The nice feature with this table that I find is you can also get a histogram. So when, if I were to click on one of these darker numbers, the grayed out part of the table is not a prob probability of being a match at 200 centimorgans. I can get the histogram like here, and see that 200 centimorgans is a pretty good chance of being first cousin, second, twice removed. There are other possibilities, of course, but I like to look at the histogram and see where the number I'm looking at actually falls. If it's way down in the low end or the super high end, then I would look at a different histogram to try to find a better result. Another tool on the DNA Painter website is the What Are the Odds, Watto, which is handy for figuring out how a person matches in your tree. So here's one that I had set up. This is in the beta version where the program will actually go through and give you a number of different possible hypotheses to consider along with ones that you've already put in. You would add a bunch of your DNA matches and the amount of DNA they share, and then it will come up with the different places, different hypotheses where the person that you're, you know, the tester might fit in the tree. The cluster auto painter is another feature. 
and that's shown here. And what that allows you to do is to take the cluster results from any of these companies that are doing the clustering, auto clustering, um, and then enter the results into DNA Painter using the HTML file that came from the company that you looked at. The other tool there is the individual match filter, and that's primarily used with family tree DNA results. Family tree reports data down to one centimorgan, and that's um, considerably lower than any of us will want to use for our results. At seven centimorgans, it's about a 50% chance of being a false match. And I actually paint down to seven. A lot of people don't go that low, but I'm willing to live with the 50% chance. But the individual match filter, you would copy the match data from family tree DNA, and it would remove all those low numbers to give you a total amount of centimorgans that you really share with the person. It can be quite helpful for things like Watto. So let's talk about chromosomes. Humans have 22 pairs of autosomal chromosomes, and you get one of these from your mother and one from your father. There's also the sex chromosome. Males get a Y from their father and an X from their mother, and females get an X from each parent. Now, some of the testing companies they're all that do autosomal DNA also will give you X chromosome results, but not all of them. So where do we get these chromosomes? First, let's look at my family tree. This is another feature on the DNA Painter website. You can enter the data manually, or you can pull in a GEDCOM from some other program you have. And in this particular case, this is me over here on the left, and everybody else on here is deceased. So these are all real names. But any names of living people, with one exception, will be um, blocked out, and I'll use uh, in other names for those people. But I use this tree when I'm looking at my DNA matches, particularly when I'm starting with known matches, that I can then see which great-grandfather or great-grandmother the data would have come from. So looking at chromosomes, I said you get one from your mother and one from your father. So here's my paternal chromosome with a picture of my dad and my maternal chromosome with a picture of my mother. And just like I got one from each of them, they both got some from, from each of their parents. So here we have my dad got his from his father, Frank, and his mother, Nora, and my mother got hers from her mother, Louisa, and her father, Tony. And it got then um, down to me in something that looks like this little image on the screen. Of course, they got it from their parents, so we go back another generation. And my dad's side, it would be uh, Edward and Pauline and Bridget and Thomas. And I may one day find pictures of Bridget and Thomas. I have a lot of my dad's pictures that don't have names on them, so I don't know who they are. And on mother's side, there's Anna Marie and Jacob and Ava and Emil. And I doubt I'll ever find a picture of Ava and Emil because the, a lot of my mother's pictures were lost in a hurricane flood. So let's get started with, oops, getting ahead of myself. So first, in order to do DNA Painter, we need to have a chromosome browser in order to get the chromosome data. So the sites that have chromosome browsers are MyHeritage, 23andMe, Family Tree DNA, and GEDmatch. And the one that's not on here, the sites that do not have chromosome browsers, one of them in particular is Ancestry. And they have been asked many times and have said that it is they consider it a privacy issue and they won't give us a chromosome browser. Living DNA currently doesn't have a chromosome browser, but they have said that there will be one in the future. I uh, don't know when that might be. But what you can do 
if your data is on Ancestry or living DNA for that matter is you can download your raw DNA and upload it to one of the other sites, Family Tree DNA, MyHeritage, or GEDmatch, the sites that do have chromosome browsers. Now the upload is free, but to get the chromosome browser on Family Tree DNA would cost $19, one time payment. And on MyHeritage to get the tools is $29, one time payment if you don't have an account at MyHeritage already. One thing about uploading your data is to make sure you read the terms and conditions for every site that you're considering to do the upload and make sure you agree with them before you go around and upload your raw DNA. Because once you've uploaded it, then you're under the terms and conditions of the site that you, you're now on as well. Now we're gonna make a, a Painter account. So you need to register for a free account if you haven't already started one. And it basically wants your name, email address, and select a password. And then you're ready to start painting. So we're gonna create a new profile. And it wants a name for the profile and it wants you to tell it whether it's a male or a female. So I'm gonna call this one Patricia and I'm female. And so we'd be ready to start painting some matches on it. This is what it looks like. So this is image of my chromosomes. The blue is the paternal and the pink is the maternal. And that's just part of it, but there's the whole page would have all of them on there. And what's gonna happen when I add matches that I have with the cousin is we're gonna see a color, I can choose the color or a painter will pick it for me, that shows exactly where the cousin and I share DNA. So what I've got here is just my chromosomes and I wouldn't wanna paint my parents, for instance, or close relatives because obviously if I painted my if my mother DNA had been done and I painted it it would cover all of my maternal chromosomes which wouldn't be too helpful It'd make it hard to see things so let's start looking at some cousins first I'm going to look at Anne and she's a second cousin once removed and she's on my mother's mother's side where Jacob Wolf and Anna Marie Brill are our common ancestors. They're my great grandparents. And she tested at MyHeritage. So here's the MyHeritage page of my matches. Here's me. And here's Anne. And it says that she's 30, in her 30s and she lives in the USA. And that information is available if the person added it when they put their results, in, when they had their results done. It says she's a first cousin twice removed to second cousin once removed. And that's their estimate. It says we share 215.4 centimorgans of DNA over 11 segments. It tells me the longest segment is 40.7. Now she has a tree of 71 people. And it also tells me that she's in the theory of family relativity, which is the hint system that my heritage has. And what that does is to take your, your DNA match and their tree and your tree, and they try and connect them either directly as they, in this case it would be directly because we're so close, or through other people's trees on the system. So it's not much different than through lines in terms of a hint, through lines on ancestry. It's a hint, and so you wanna take it as a hint. In this case, I know it's true because I know where Anne fits in the family too. So if I hit review DNA match, now I get the shared match list that shows me and Anne and all these people that we both match. It says we have 46 DNA matches in common. It tells me my relationship to the person and how much DNA, and it tells me Anne's relationship and how much DNA. And so if we go down here to Joe, 
it says that he shares 21.3 centimorgans with me and 19.4 with Anne. And there's this little symbol of on the right hand side. And what that symbol is telling me is that Joe and Anne and I share the exact same segment of DNA on a particular chromosome. That's called triangulate, where we all three share the same segment on the same chromosome. And what it means is that we have a common ancestor. So most of the time I paint triangulated matches because then I can try and figure out how the person fits into my tree. So if I click on that symbol, I get the chromosome browser for my heritage. And here's, <clears throat> excuse me, here's Anne and her data is going to be in red and here's Joe and his is sort of in this mustard color. And it says right here at the top that we have one triangulated segment. And here it shows us on chromosome two with a similar uh, oval, how the, where that triangulation is. Now at the bottom of this page is the list of data, all the segments that Anne and I share. I can copy this list just as it is there and then put it into DNA Painter. So what I'm gonna do up here Paint a new match. If I click on paint a new match, I can then paste in this data from my heritage, which is what's shown here. And I have two options. I can preview the segments or I can save the match. Since I know Anne is a second cousin once removed, I'm just gonna go directly and save the match. That brings up this screen. I know how we're connected, so I click that box. I'm gonna call it Anne. And I said earlier, our common ancestors were Jacob Wolf and Anna Briel. So I'm gonna name the group for those com common ancestors, that, that couple. Now that's an individual choice. Some people prefer to name it for the ancestor that they got the DNA from, which would be my mother's mother, my grandmother, Louise. Other people prefer to name it for the couple, because of course Louise got it from her parents, Jacob and Anna. And I tend to go with the couple. It's an entirely up to you which way you wanna name it, and there's no right or wrong about it. And at the same time, it's very easy to make changes if you start one way and then change to the other. So I know that's on my mother's side, so I'm gonna tell it maternal, and I let Painter pick the color for me today. So here's the chromosome map, and those pink segments show where Anne and I share data on my maternal side, and down here in the key, it says that it's Jacob Wolf and Anna Brill is the group that that's in. So now we have our first person painted. If we go back to my heritage, we looked at Joe and he triangulated with Anne. So I go to the bottom of the page and below Anne's match to me, here's Joe's data match to me. My heritage says Joe has two segments and one of them that we saw on chromosome two is this one, 12 centimorgans. On chromosome 10, he's got one that's only six centimorgans. And I already mentioned that there's a 50% chance of seven centimorgans being a false match. And I don't paint under seven. But at the same time, I can copy the whole table and put it into Painter. And because exclude segments under seven centimorgans, this is an editable feel. If you don't want to go that low, you can set it to something higher. I can eliminate this when it goes into Painter without having to just copy the particular line that I want. So this time, let's pre preview the segments. And that's what this looks like. It says one new match segment. It's outlined below. So here's the new match. It's showing it here. It's showing that it's 
overlaps this maternal match I have that's Jacob Wolf and Anna Brill. Well, we already knew that he triangulated with Anne, so that makes perfectly good sense. But I don't know how he fits in my family, other than he's related to that same line that Anne and I are. And so I'm gonna, when I save his match, I'm gonna say, I don't know how we're connected. I'm gonna call it Joe, but rather than putting him in the same group, since I'm pretty sure based on how little DNA he shares with me compared to the amount Anne shares, that he would be several generations past Jacob and Anna. So I'm gonna name it a new group and call it Triangulates with Anne. And that's the way I tend to do with my matches. Again, it's, it's totally up to you how you wanna group things, but that way keeps it straight for me. So here's Joe painted, and you can see on chromosome two, there's Anne and there's Joe. So let's move to the next cousin. And Trish is on my dad's mother's side. She's, she comes from Tom, she and I share Thomas Burns and Bridget Fenton. Trish tested at 23 and me and she has given me permission to use her real name, which is here, and her data. So other than my name, that's the only other name on here that's a live, real name for a live person. So Trish is a second cousin. 23andMe will show you the percentage here, but you can put that percentage into the shared Centimorgan project and get the number of Centimorgans if you wanted to do that. If I click on Trisha's name, I get our list of relatives in common, same thing as shared matches, same thing as in common with, different companies call it different things. So here's the list of people, my relationship to me, relationship to Trish, and over here where it says shared DNA, where it says yes, is, is just like where the little symbol was on my heritage. It means that that person shares the exact same segment on the same chromosome with Trish and me. So I'm looking at Joan at the moment. Where it says no means that we're still cousins, we're still related, but it's not the same segment on the same chromosome. It may still be a common ancestor, but we can't say that for sure because it's not the same segment. When it says share to see, it means that the person hasn't made their results public. And if you want to see what it is, you can contact them and ask them to share it with you. So we're gonna look at Joan. If I click on yes, <clears throat> excuse me, here comes the chromosome browser. And it shows Trish in purple, and we do share 402 centimorgans across 19 segments. And Joan shares 16 with me across one segment. And here on chromosome four, you can see where Joan and Trish both fall. At the bottom of the page, here's part of the table of Trish's data. And just like before, I'm gonna copy the table and I'm gonna paste it into paint a new match. And I skipped a couple of steps here as far as showing you the slides, but it's just like we did a minute ago. And here's Trish, dark green, and it's Thomas Burns and Bridget Fenton. And it's on my paternal side, it's my dad's mother's side. You might notice on chromosome 10, I've now got a paternal segment and a maternal segment in about the same place. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, they're not related to each other, and I know that, and, and there's, it's perfectly fine the way it is. If we go back to that chromosome browser for 23andMe, at the bottom of the page again, I can get Jones data. I can copy it, paste it into paint a new match, and paint her results. So here on chromosome four, we have Trish, and here we have Joan, and I called Joan's group triangulates with Trish. Consistent, yeah, to, to be consistent with what I was doing before. 
Next, we're going to look at Frank. Now, Frank is my Barry cousin, so he's on my dad's dad's side. And our common ancestors are Edward Barry and Pauline Freilich. And Frank tested at Family Tree DNA. Now, Family Tree DNA does things a little bit differently than the other two that we've already looked at. And I'll point that out again in a minute. One of the things you get with Family Tree DNA, you can see these uh, little blue or red boxes with a, the blue has a male silhouette and the red has a female silhouette. Those are known cousins to me, and I have been able to locate them in my family tree in tree that is on family tree DNA. And because I have identified them in my tree, they put up the little symbol. So they know that Frank is on my paternal side because he's in my tree, and they know that Jay here is on my maternal side because he's in the tree also. So they give me the match date, they give me a cousin relationship. Um, the shared centimorgans, I mentioned earlier, they have a tendency to go all the way down to one centimorgan when they're calculating. And so these numbers are typically inflated compared to what you would find on the other companies. So to get to the chromosome browser, if I select Frank, Clicking, clicking the button here and hit chromosome browser, I get the chromosome browser. Now, here's the data and I wanna paint it. I can download the segments, which would put it into a, a CSV file, or I can hit detailed segment data, which I find easier to do. And I get this table of data with Frank. And you can see all of these really small matches. Again, Painter will take care of that, so I just copy the whole table. And here's Frank, um, he's painted red, and it's Edward Berry and Pauline Freilich, our common great-grandparents. Going back to Family Tree DNA, I can get the shared matches, they call them here, in common with by selecting Frank and then pressing in common with. And so here's a list of matches and we're going to look at Mark. So I go to the chromosome browser and I add Mark. You can add somebody by hitting this update selected matches and select them out of the, the list of matches. Mark has two segments. There's one on 12 and the other one is on chromosome 20. Now, family tree DNA doesn't exactly give you a crumb, um, um, excuse me, doesn't exactly tell you that you have triangulated matches. They just don't have that on their site. Years ago, they had a, a one for a little while, but it got discontinued. So even though Mark is on chromosome 20, and so is Frank, I can't tell for certain that they're that Mark is paternal, I know Frank is, but I can use the FTDNA matrix. So in the matrix, I go through the match list and I select Frank and I go through the match list and I select Mark. And then I look at the results down here. And because they have the blue box with a check mark in it, it says the person is identified as a match. So I know from the chromosome browser that Frank and Mark both are on chromosome 20. And I know from the matrix that they match each other. And that's enough for me to use to say that Mark is paternal, just like Frank. So then I copy that data from the chromosome browser we had a few minutes ago from Mark. And again, you can see all of these values that are really tiny, but DNA Painter is going to exclude them. And I paint Mark's match. So Mark is here in purple, and he triangulates with Frank. So here he is on chromosome 20. So next, we're going to look at Jed match. Just go through and look at sort of two, two of these on 
each of the different sides and hopefully you can see how you would go about painting them yourself. So there's a number of ways to find a match on GEDmatch. One of them is to start out with the one-to-many list. Another, there are a number of Facebook groups that have a matchbox tool. And most of these I'm familiar with are based on an Irish or Scottish or Polish group where people had ancestors that lived in this particular region and so they would be using this particular Facebook group. Another method is the GEDmatch ancestor projects. Many of these are also based on people who lived in a particular region, but I've also seen some that are surnames, like you ha might have a Murphy family, for example. And so anybody with that surname might join that project. I've seen one for the Brian, O'Brien, and stuff like that. Another way is from auto clusters. Uh, that's, you need tier one on GEDmatch to do the auto clusters, but it's another way to get a list of, of matches. And once you find a match from any one of these sites, uh, ways, I guess is better, then you would want to analyze the suggested match with the GEDmatch one-to-one tool. If you've ever run the one-to-many tool, it goes through large number of matches and gives you results in a matter of seconds. And what you'll find is when you run the one-to-one, -one, it takes about the same amount of time and you get a much more accurate result. They use a different algorithm for the one-to-many and if they use the one that's more accurate, it would take hours to go through all the data. So it's an estimate, so to speak, that you get first and you get a much refined match from the one-to-one. -one. And some of the time, one-to-many will tell you there is a match and one-to-one -one will say, no, there's not. So you definitely want to check with one-to-one -one before you use it. So here's my one-to-many list. In the column on the left, you'd have the kit number for the person that you're looking at. Um, the A tells you that you can click on that and it'll get, take you to the one-to-one -one results. The name of the person would be in this column or the alias they used or whatever. Their email address is here, so that's one way you can easily contact them. And then they tell you the largest segment, the total amount of Santa Morgans, the predicted generation, the overlap, the date they completed, the, they did the comparison, and the testing company. So we're going to look at Ted. Now, Ted is somebody that I've emailed with, and I know he's on my Barry side of the family. He's got a quite extensive tree that goes back a couple of generations past where I can go. And so one of the things with my tree, that is, and so one of the things I've been trying to do working with Ted is to figure out the connection between my Barry family and his Barry family. They lived about 10 miles apart from each other in uh, Ireland, around 1800-ish. So there's a lot of stuff to be done there to figure that one out. But anyway, so we're going to look at Ted. So. I put in my kit number and Ted's kit number in the one to one and click, here's the results. And what you get is the graphic that shows all the chromosomes as well as the table of numbers. Now in the graphic where you have the blue on the bottom and the mostly yellow on the top, it's telling you that it's a half match. Now half match means it's either maternal or it's paternal but not both. So if you were to look at a match with a sibling, you would probably have some that were full match where you both got the same segment from your mother and you both got the same segment from your father. But in general, you're gonna see half matches to unknown people or cousins or whatever. Where it's black with this mostly red on top, it means there's no match. Now for DNA Painter, I can copy the whole page, not just this little table. And so I copy the whole page and I put it in to paint, your, paint a new match and it takes care of itself. I guess I didn't put the slide in to show you that. 
it takes care of itself. It only takes the data it needs and it ignores all the graphics and everything else. Now, I know Ted is paternal. I know he's on my Barry line, but I don't know how we're connected. So I'm going to leave it that. And I'm going to name it just Ted. And I made him paternal because I know he's on my Barry line. And it turns out that he's right here. And I said earlier, Frank was my Barry line. So that's kind of interesting to have them near but not touching. Something else to investigate. So that was a short how-to with all four of the different sites that have chromosome browsers. So now let me tell you how I use DNA Painter. I use it for everything. It is my main location for DNA matches information. I can put I put notes on segments and on groups. I look at matches. If they have a tree, I look for sur surnames. I look for locations. Sometimes on um, 23andMe, they'll give you the, the the match will tell you surnames or where their great grandparents or something lived, and that's the kind of thing that I add to my notes because I'm then trying to figure out how they fit in my family. And I'm an only child. My parents are deceased and my closest cousins are second cousins. So I am working at a great grandparent level all the time. My great grandparents were born around 1840. So <laughs> I'm back pretty far in anything I do, which is why I paint down to seven because I'm looking for distant matches always. That's all I have. One of the things I'm trying to do now is working with Trish, we're trying to locate where our great grandfather, Thomas Burns, lived in County Roscommon, Ireland. And I use triangulated matches, both for known cousins and for unknown matches, to try and figure out things like this. So here's the tree, and Trish and I share Thomas Burns and Bridget Mary Fenton. From US records, I know that Thomas Burns was born between 1838, 1842. There's a great many parishes in County Roscommon whose baptismal records didn't survive from that time period. So I don't have a baptismal record from him. His wife, Bridget Mary Fenton, was born in Limerick, and I have County Limerick, and I have her baptismal record. So the first thing I try to do it, it looking at the 19 segments that Trisha and I share is figure out if it's a Burns line or a Fenton line. I have a fair amount of information on the Fenton line based on a book that a third cousin once removed wrote about the Fenton family. On the Burns line, I know Thomas's parents' names were Patrick and Henora from the marriage license. And I know from my dad and great aunt's notes that Henora's maiden name was Shannon. So here's a set on chromosome one that I painted from Jed Match. And all of these blue matches triangulate with each other. And four of them had the same surname, I'm calling it Duffy, and the same email address. So I emailed the person with the Duffy address, and I emailed these others that I haven't named. And I asked, you know, about the great grand their grandparents and where they lived and things like you would in, in an email contacting somebody. And what I found out is all the Duffies lived right around this region in Galway, County Galway, and that one of them had married a Burns. And looking at other DNA matches, I have some that match surname Shannon, and they lived in this area of County Mayo. So my latest hypothesis is that my Thomas Burns lived somewhere in this area. And that's one of the things that 
I'm working on to try and figure out where he lived using DNA since the records don't exist. So in summary, we did a little history of DNA painter and how it came about. We looked at chromosomes and how you get data from different parts of your family. We set up a profile on DNA painter and looked at how to paint from my heritage, 23andMe, family tree and DNA, and GEDmatch. And then I told you a little bit about how I use DNA painter. So thank you very much. And contact information, here's the blog contact information. And the blog is patriciacolemangenealogy.com. Thank you. Questions? Excellent. Thank you, Patsy. That was fantastic. Um, so let's see. There's a couple of people saying thank you in the in the questions area. If you've got some questions, go ahead and, and throw those in there. We'll give you guys a couple of seconds to type up your questions. <laughs> and uh, excellent. And make sure you jot down uh, Patricia's uh, blog there so you can follow her on her blog. So uh, let's see. So we've got a couple of comments saying thank you for um, for the demonstration and um and that it was uh, very clear and thorough so let me clear these out oh here. good all right well i'm not not seeing any other questions so patricia thank you so much for for joining us today uh we definitely uh, appreciate your time and and being with us um and again uh, we hope to see all of you again uh, at a vga webinar again real soon so thank you so much for coming bye-bye thank you